In this video, we're going to begin our discussion with hypothesis tests for a population mean. So we've learned that the sampling distribution of the sample mean is approximately normal with the mean equal to the population mean, and the standard deviation is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, provided that the population from which the sample was drawn is normally distributed or the sample size is sufficiently large. So hypothesis testing regarding a population mean using the p-value approach. To test hypotheses regarding the population mean, assuming the population standard deviation is unknown, we use the t distribution rather than the z distribution. And we'll replace theta with s. And here is our formula below. And it follows a student's t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So understand, we're not going to be using this t distribution formula, just like we're not going to be using a t table to do these problems. We'll be using the graphing calculator, which is exactly what I would expect you to be able to do for this exam. OK, let's take a look at an example. A researcher reports that the average salary of assistant professors is more than $42,000. A random sample of 40 assistant professors has a mean salary of 43260 and a standard deviation of 5,230. An alpha equal to 0 0.05, determine if there is evidence to support the researcher's claim. So what do we have? We have one population. It's given us a mean, and it's a hypothesis testing. OK, so let's write out the initial conditions. I will write out the first two now. Okay, so this is a simple random sample, and 40 is less than or equal to 5% of the population of assistant professors. Well, notice what the sample size, that's 40. Well, certainly 40 is greater than or equal to 30. So because we know that, the central limit theorem of, says that the sampling distribution of the sample mean is approximately normal. So I'm going to write that out now. Since the sample size is 40, which is greater than or equal to 30, the central limit theorem states that the sampling distribution of the sample mean is approximately normal. Okay, so now that the requirements have been met, let's write out the null and alternative hypotheses. Now the null would be the population mean is equal to $42,000. Let's look for keywords. We're talking about more than 42,000. So the alternative hypotheses would be the population mean is greater than $42,000. Again, don't forget your units of measurement. Okay, so now let's put this into the calculator. Okay, so how do we put this into the calculator? Hit stat, highlight tests, and we're going to go to the T test, which is number two. Hit enter. In our particular example, it's going to be stats, so highlight stats. Okay. The population mean is 42,000. The sample mean is 43,260. The sample standard deviation is 5,230. And n in our particular case is 40. And then we want it to be greater than, so highlight here. Highlight Calculate, and hit Enter. So the p-value will round to four decimal places, would be 0 0.0678. Okay, well, let's put that on the paper now. Okay, so on the paper, it's t-test, parenthesis. In this case, it's stats, comma, the population mean, 42,000, comma, the sample mean, 43,260, comma, the sample standard deviation, 5230, comma, n, and then in this case, greater than, and I've written the p-value out, rounded to four decimal places. So, this particular value, is this less than 0 0.05? Well, that's a no at this particular stage, so we will not reject the null hypothesis. And now I'm going to write out the conclusion to this below. So there is not sufficient evidence at the alpha equal to 0 0.05 level of significance to conclude that the mean salary of assistant professors is greater than $42,000.
Okay, let's take a look at the next example. So a researcher claims that the average cost of men's athletic shoes is less than $80. He selects a random sample of 36 pairs of athletic shoes from a catalog and determines that the average cost is $75. And the standard deviation is $19.20. Is there enough evidence to support the researcher's claim at alpha equal to 1 tenth? Okay, so let's write out the conditions for this now. Okay, sim number one, simple random sample. Two, 36 is less than or equal to 5% of the population of pairs of athletic shoes. And number three, the sample size, which is 36, which is greater than or equal to 30. So by the central limit theorem, the sampling distribution of the sample mean is approximately normal. And again, remember what we have. We have one population with a mean and we're asking to do a hypothesis test. Now, now that the conditions have been met, let's write out the null and alternative hypotheses. Well, the null, the mean is equal to $80. Again, don't forget your unit of measurement. Now, look for keywords, less than $80. So the alternative hypotheses can be written like this. Okay, let's write out on the paper what we're going to be doing in the calculator. So, it is a t-test. Right? It'll be stats. Start off with the population mean, which is 80, comma. We'll now go to the sample mean, which is 75, comma. The standard deviation, comma. The number that's in the sample, that's 36, comma. mu is less than mu sub zero. Right? Okay, now let's put this into the calculator. Okay, so putting this into the calculator, stat, highlight tests. Number two, this is a t-test. Again, it's stats. This time around, it's 80 for the population mean, hit enter. 75 is the sample mean, hit enter. 19 and 2 tenths, hit enter. The sample here is going to be 36, hit enter. This time we're going to highlight this, hit enter. Highlight, calculate, hit enter. So the p-value is 0 0.063 and rounding up to 6. So let's put that on our paper now. Okay, so now we're going to compare the p-value with the air. So clearly in this case this decimal is less than one-tenth so we're going to reject the null hypothesis. All right so let's write out the conclusion for this in the context of this problem. There seems to be sufficient evidence at the alpha equal to one-tenth level of significance to conclude that the researchers claim of the average cost of men's athletic shoes is less than $80. Okay, one more example. According to the United States Mint, quarters weigh 5 and 6700 grams. A researcher is interested in determining whether the state quarters have a weight that is different from the 5 and 6700 grams. He randomly selects 18 state quarters, weighs them, and obtains the following data. At alpha equal to 0 0.05 level of significance, is there evidence to conclude that the state quarters have a weight different than 5 and 6700 grams? So again, what do we have? One population with a, mean, a way of getting the mean, and it's asking for a hypothesis test. Okay, so let's write out at least the first two conditions for this now. So this is a simple random sample. 18 is less than or equal to 5% of the population of state quarters. Now, this number is not greater than or equal to 30. So there's two things we need to check. We need to check the box plot to make sure there's no outliers. And we need to check the normal probability plot to make sure that it's approximately linear. So let's do those two things with the calculator now. Okay, so I've put the data values into L1. So let's check the box plot first. So hit second y equals, we'll go to plot 1, 
highlight the box plot with the outliers, hit enter. X list is fine, frequency is one. Click on zoom, stat, and we have a box plot with no outliers. Now let's check the normal probability plot. Second, y equal to, plot on. So here I will highlight this picture, hit enter. Data list is L1, X is fine. Again, hit zoom. And the number nine, that's zoom stat. Okay. And that normal probability plot is approximately linear. So now let's write this on the paper. So the box plot contains no outliers. The normal probability plot is approximately linear. So the data is taken from a population that is normally distributed. Okay. Now that we've done the conditions, let's write out the null and alternative hypotheses. So the null will be, again, don't forget your unit of measurement. Now, let's look for keywords here. Got a weight that is different. That tells me the alternative hypothesis is going to be written like this. Okay, so now let's go to the calculator and be able to figure out how to do this type of problem. Okay, go to stat, test, and then we'll go down to t-test. Well, this time around, we're going to highlight data and hit enter. So the mean for us is 5 and 67 hundreds. The list I have it is L1. Frequency will always be 1 and I've highlighted not equal to. Go down, highlight, calculate, and hit enter. So rounding this to four decimal places, that's 0 0.0136. So now let's write this on the paper. Okay, so on the paper, we write t-test, right parenthesis, data, comma, the mean, 5.67, comma L1, comma 1, comma, showing it's not equal, and I've written the p-value underneath, rounded to four decimal places. So clearly this decimal is less than 0 0.05, so we're going to reject. So now let's write out the conclusion based on the problem given below. So there seems to be sufficient evidence at the alpha equal to 0 0.05 level of significance to conclude that the weight of state quarters is different from 5 and 6700 grams.